This is Seven National News and in our top story. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has honoured winners of the 17th edition of the Dubai Government's Excellence Programme Awards at the Dubai World Trade Centre. The ceremony saw the attendance of Dubai Crown Prince and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council, His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Dubai Deputy Ruler, His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, as well as other sheikhs and senior officials. Following a documentary about Dubai government's achievements between the 16th and the 17th editions of the DGEP Awards, the ruler of Dubai, accompanied by the Crown Prince of Dubai and Secretary General of Dubai Executive Council, Abdullah Ashaybani, honoured the winners. Dubai Police and the RTA shared the majority of the awards, followed by Diwa and Dubai Municipality. The four departments collected the awards for their excellence on the teams and individual levels. The UAE has released the additional $60 million pledged during the second donors' conference towards the commitment of aid for refugees and victims of the Syrian crisis. According to the state news agency WAM, the amount provided is part of the commitment of the UAE made during the first and second donors' conference for Syrians in Kuwait in January 2013 and 2014 respectively, in providing the monetary aid of $360 million to help Syrian refugees. Most of the money released will provide shelter, food, health care and sanitation for Syrian and Palestinian civilians affected by the conflict. $50 million of the new release will help those displaced inside Syria and the rest will support refugees in camps in Jordan. About $110 million has been spent by the UAE, including the private sector and individuals, since 2012 in providing aid for the victims of the Syrian crisis. According to the UAE Ministry of Development and International Cooperation estimates, 9 million people need aid and protection. There are 6.5 million internally displaced and 2.6 million have taken refuge in neighbouring countries such as Jordan and Turkey. Dubai joins the world in marking Autism Awareness Today with educational and fundraising events. This year, the United Nations urges all concerned to take part in fostering progress by supporting education programs, employment opportunities and other measures. In line with this, the Doris Duan Young Autism Center opened its doors to the public today in Dubai. Following its success in Orlando, the, U the USA, the CEO and founder of the $1 million facility, Doris Duan Young, officially inaugurated the second branch along with Marwan Abedin, the CEO of Dubai Healthcare City. According to her, the, this complements the existing centres that are catering to those with autism in the UAE and across the region. The state-of-the-art facility can accommodate up to 100 children and adults and has been set up to provide early intervention, speech and behavioural therapy as well as vocational training. The centre provides sensory rooms, theatre for imaginative play, a quiet room and space for group and single therapy. We toured the facility here last time we were in Dubai, and we were told that there's not a facility address adult needs. So we have a portion of the center is dedicated to um, individuals 16 and up. So we teach them independent living skills, we teach them social skills, teach them how to grow into an independent adult. Well, children with autism often have coordination skill deficits. So the climbing wall is a fun way to teach them gross motor skills. And a lot of kids will resist if you just to teach them the gross motor skills without having fun. But who will resist a climbing wall when you really have so much fun? While you're climbing, actually you're learning. Prior to the center's opening, she says they have already been seeing 10 clients locally, evidence of the rising demand for the services they offer. Also a best-selling author of books on autism, Duan Young says there is already a plan to establish a branch in Abu Dhabi by the end of this year. This center is absolutely built from the heart, same as the center in USA that we have. All our staff walk into the door, they go through a culture training. We have seven core values in our company, unconditional love is being one of them, very top one. You know, for any staff who work in our agency, if they don't have unconditional love in their heart, there's no way they can survive in this environment. A new report by Pearson Education highlighting the findings of Deloitte indicated that UAE will have to hire more than 75,000 teachers by 2015 to er eradicate teacher gap for universal education. The report also brought to light the statistics by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which indicated that in the Arab world, around 1.6 million new teaching positions have to be created if the universal education has to be achieved. 
adding that the figure is likely to increase to 3.3 million if the drastic measures are not taken. The Pearson report suggested that the Arab world's growing teacher shortage threatens to overshadow the region's educational gains and therefore needs to be addressed quickly and effectively. Teacher shortages are a global problem compounded by a growing number of retirement age teachers and a record number of children entering education. But it is a problem that is felt particularly deeply in the Arab world, where there is a rapidly growing school age population, expected to soon reach 9.5 million. According to the representatives from Pearson quoted in local reports, good teachers are essential to high quality education and to make a real difference to students' educational attainment, teachers must be rigorously, rigorously trained, well qualified and undergo reg regular professional development. The Dubai Police, together with the Ministry of Labour, have launched an awareness campaign titled Cross Safely for road users and labourers in particular in a bid to reduce runover accidents whilst crossing the roads. According to the state news agency WAM, the Dubai Police has detailed the plans and methods that will be used to educate workers during the campaign, which will include distribution of brochures translated in several languages to many workers as well as delivering lectures and also notify them about the crossing road fines. The Director of Event Management of Dubai Police, Juma Bu Suedan, said that many labourers had benefited in previous years from such lectures organised by the police and that these lectures aim to raise the level of compliance with traffic laws and regulations, pointing out that the campaign aims at reducing runover accidents to 0%. According to the statistics by Dubai Police, around 550 runover accidents had occurred in 2013, of which 46 deaths were reported. Additionally, the Dubai Police mobile application since its launch has witnessed increased popularity to become the highest rated and top government application in the country. The app includes a number of services allowing people to access their fines and pay them through the app, apply for a good conduct certificate, SOS button and take photos of vehicles violating traffic rules and send them to the police. According to the statistics, 1.9 million traffic fine inquiries were made across the platform since the launch of the app, and over 17 million dirhams worth of traffic fines were paid using the app and the mobile site. The UAE spending on homeland security is set to double from $5.5 billion to more than $10 billion in the next decade, according to the 2013-14 annual report by the U.S. Commerce Department's International Trade Administration. As investment increases on homeland security, economic development and rapid population growth, the study also estimates spending to reach $57.7 million by 2015. In line with increasing demand for security and safety across the globe, innovative products and specialized services are being showcased at the ongoing International Exhibition for Security and National Resilience in Abu Dhabi. Now in its second day, it continues to attract emergency, security and safety experts as well as decision makers from the public and private sectors. 400 companies from 40 countries are participating in this edition. Among these is Four Winds K9 Police Dog Centre, a specialised training centre in the Netherlands. In operation for 21 years now and in partnership with multinationals and governments including in the Middle East, they say this is their initial outing at ISNR. In addition to showcasing the importance of canine dogs in emergency and crisis situations, they also aim to raise awareness on their expertise, which includes training of local dog handlers to ensure sustainability in a team or force. It's very important uh, that uh, detection dogs are used, uh, especially explosive detection dogs. Um, the high importance is that still until now, and no robot or no other equipment has proven to be better than the nose of the dog. Um, it's still a very, very good tool uh, for uh, in a in issue of, uh, people working uh, in uh, emergency situations, but also for prevention. Um, military, police, customs, uh, the total world is working uh, with, with this type of dogs. Um, we also um, train narcotic detection dogs, currency detection dogs and security patrol dogs but uh, especially the explosive detection dogs they are uh, they are very uh, very popular at this time and also uh, they are used a lot and they bring a big big um, big big effort into security also drawing a lot of attention is the GuardBot, an unmanned amphibious vehicle system that hopes to leverage on the rising demand in the region from surveillance to broadcast with an ability to navigate any terrain, including sands, water and land, the product is designed for non-intrusive surveillance and is valued over 100,000 US dollars.
Garbar has uh, several qualities. One of them is to uh, be able to participate in sports casting. Uh, for sports, it can image uh, the soccer game and it could also image other sports as well. And the beauty of that is they can image it live and send a live stream of uh, the game that it is or the sports activity that it's uh, imaging and send it back into uh, for a feed and to broadcasting. It could also perform security and surveillance as well in a stadium or in a place where the sports activity takes place. Uh, it has also other purposes such as a fan cam. It can operate with the fans of the sports activity. And uh, we have done several golf activities and imaging of soccer games and so forth. It's a very useful system, the Garbat. And finally, in the bulletin, beachgoers who frequent the Marina Shoreline and the Jumeirah Beach residents will now have an option to go to the cinemas right next to the sea following the opening of real cinemas at the area's latest retail attraction, the beach. The opening of the real cinemas is expected to be a huge attraction for those looking for a cinema experience at a waterfront location, which will be in addition to the outdoor cinema planned by the management of the beach. Real cinemas have added a total of 10 screens, which includes the seven standard screens together with three platinum movie suites. The cinema will also have five 3D screens and has a total seating capacity for 900 people. Additional features of the cinema is the Platinum Lounge, a dedicated kitchen for the visitors overlooking the Arabian Sea. The new cinema is expected to be a major crowd pillar to the one kilometer long latest family entertainment and shopping complex, which consists of four low-rise plazas, two of which are currently open for public, offering a range of dining and retail options. Well, the location is obviously quite something uh, at the beach, uh, brand new development, a very popular area of Dubai as well, and a beautiful view from our platinum lounge here, as you can probably see. Um, it's, a, it's in walking distance for a lot of people, residents and so on, and uh, the, you, the, as I say, our, we have our platinum and standard class, so there's an option of whichever you want to enjoy, whether you want to pamper yourself or just enjoy yourself. We believe we're uh, very popular, our numbers show that at our other two locations. We like to be selective in locations, we think this is a very beautiful and complimentary location which will do very well, so we're delighted to be here.